There's three types of watercolor papers on the market. You have cold pressed, which has a little bit of texture. You have rough, which has much more texture. And you have hot pressed, which is the smoothest. It has no texture. So this is the hot pressed. It has no texture. This is cold pressed. It has some texture. And this is rough. It has more texture than cold pressed. So these are the three types of watercolor papers. Hot pressed has no texture. It will look smoother and everything will be, you'll be able to paint much smoother. There will be no texture. Now, what happens when you go to cold pressed? You do have texture, and when you have texture, you feel it right away on the paper. The rough watercolor paper, you have even more texture. So now, this is when the fun begins, because you can do a lot of dry brushing on rough watercolor papers. So, as you can hear it too, there's much more texture. This paper has a tooth to it. So let's take a look at it again. This is a rough watercolor paper, cold pressed watercolor paper, and hot pressed. And you can see the difference, how the texture is showing through. Uh, this is cold pressed. You don't see as much texture, although there's still texture. And then there's hot pressed, which has no texture. And look how smooth. Uh, this paint looks on this paper. So that's the difference between these three. I encourage you to try all three of them because you never know which one will become your favorite. For beginners, I always recommend cold pressed, which is this one, because it's like in the middle. It has slight texture and it's the easiest to control and easy to lift up. You can buy watercolors in three different forms. You can buy them in tubes, which is what I mostly use. These are the tubes and basically it's a paste and you just squeeze it onto your palette and then you can leave it to dry and all you have to do to activate the paint is add water to it. So for example, these are already dry. I just have to add water and it activates the paint. So basically there's no difference if you just paint with um, 
paint squeezed out of a tube. So this is the paint and this is a quinacridone red squeezed out of a tube. Another way you can get your watercolors is in pants, in cakes. So these are the pants. So the watercolors are already dry. So all you have to do is the same thing, uh, just add water to activate the paint. And you just have to rub on it with a brush. All you have to do is just add water on top of it. And if you just put some water to sit on it, it will, you just have more of that uh, the liquidy paste of watercolor so you can move it over to your palette if you want to. Now the third option is liquid watercolors. And these are Dr. PH Martin's. Um, they are very liquidy and this is what happens when I take a little bit of it. So that's your watercolor right there. If you wet again the paper a little bit and then you squeeze a little bit of that paint, this is what happens. So these watercolors are in a liquid form and when I squeeze it directly on the paper, I can still spread it. So these are the three different types of watercolor, the, the form of watercolors that you can buy your paints, uh, cakes, uh, tubes, or watercolors uh, in the liquid form. What is wet on wet? So wet on wet means you are painting over a wet surface. For example, I am going to wet this paper. And now because it's already wet, when I add my color, this is quinacridone red, this is wet on wet. This is wet on wet. If I paint over a dry surface, it becomes wet on dry. So the paper is dry and now I am painting with my brush filled with water and paint and this is wet on dry. Washi tape is totally optional. This is just to add a white frame. So I'm going to go ahead and use this washi tape to add on each side of my paper. Press it hard. So there is our washi tape. here because it's starting over here so some hair sometimes I go like this sometimes I start from the top it's better to start from the bottom because the hair is starts uh, a little thicker and then it ends thinner so this way I would give it more like natural look to it but I'm just adding some hair here and there. Some hair, I need more water. Definitely more water. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see the overall. Because why do I do that? I zoom out so I can see the overall photograph, the reference photo, so I don't focus too much, like let's say on this area because that's all I see. I wanna see the overall uh, because I do not want to focus on too much detail, I just want to do some.
So dry brushing means you don't have much paint and water on your brush and you just scrub over a surface. So this is a watercolor paper. This is hot pressed actually. It works much better when the paper is cold pressed. But first I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do it on hot press. I'm going to dip my brush in water and I'm going to go for some paint that's not diluted much with water. How about this little piece? And now I don't have much uh, water here and paint, but I'm going to do some dry brushing. This is hot pressed, but I can still do some dry brushing on this paper if I don't have enough of water in my paint. So this is dry brushing on hot pressed. And now let's do dry brushing on cold pressed. So I'm gonna grab a little more. This paper has texture because it's cold pressed. So the dry brushing will show much more and it will make more sense now to you. As you can see, this is dry brushing. I am just rubbing the paper with this brush and there is water in my paint. I'm gonna grab a little more water and you can control the, the dry brushing. Um, just depends how much water you wanna have. But this is the texture you can create with dry brushing. You can do it with different brushes. For example, a smaller brush, I can do smaller areas dry brushing. What does it mean to lift up? So I just painted this piece wet on dry and quinacridone red has dried already. So this is all dry and this is hot pressed watercolor paper. Lifting up means you basically remove some of the paint to add light. You can do this with a brush. Uh, I like to use my angular brushes or chisel blender brushes, which is a flat brush. What I would do is I would wet this brush, wipe it on a towel, and then to create, for example, a line, I would just go along like this. For that purpose, you can also help yourself with a paper towel. And when you press, you remove actually more paint. 